What is up, folks? It is Southbound and Down, back again. It's been a while. I had to put on some peppy music that is not my style to get myself pumped up to be here, back again with my homeboys from my most hated teams, the guys that I love the most and hate the most at the same time. Fellas, good to be back. We've got a ton to talk about. Gene, super heavyweight. How's it going? Doing good, man. Doing good. I'm um, really excited. I wish the season could start on Sunday. Excellent. Scott Karasik, Falcons representative. What is up, my man? Oh, I'm, I'm in a great mood. Atlanta finally has a pass rusher again. Nice. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, so we've got a ton to talk about. We're This is a draft recap. The draft... Uh, what Joey named as, and he's going to be late to the show. He's making an entrance. Uh, draft aftermath, and we're going to recap what the South has done, uh, what what we did in preparation for the draft. It's finally over, and I'm glad. I know that you guys are ready for football, but that draft stuff is exhausting. Um, so, Gene, why don't we just go ahead and pump it up and start to you with uh, the fuel up, and what we want to do is just see what team – Help themselves the most most in the draft. What 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 do you got? What do you think about that? Who helped themselves the most? I'm gonna have to say Tampa did, because uh, honestly, when you look at the rest of the NFC South, we're the only team that didn't have a decent quarterback, and that goes back to Josh Freeman, even even before Josh Freeman. You guys can, I mean, you look from top to bottom. You've got um, Matt Ryan, you've got Cam Newton, you've got Drew Brees. And then you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we had Mike Glennon. And that's just, I mean, it doesn't strike fear. I mean, look at Scott's, the look on Scott's face is priceless. It, you know, it, it, it is what it is. When, you know, you're licking your chops every Sunday when you think, oh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we're going to face Mike Glennon and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, it's just. Um, or Josh yeah, McCown. Yeah, or Josh McCown. So, so we, we had to upgrade at that position. Do you think uh, you guys gave up on uh, Glennon a little too soon, maybe? Uh, personally, I've gone back uh, with NFL Rewind and watched him last year and the year before last, and he's a mediocre quarterback, and he's going to be a he's going to be a backup wherever he goes. He's going to end up losing the job to somebody else that'll come in, and that's just my my personal opinion. I love him in Atlanta as a backup to Matt Ryan because he's like a poor man's Matt Ryan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and. He's going to challenge. He's going to challenge Jameis Winston, but um, we all know how that story is going to end up. So, uh, I, personally, I, I think he's a good quarterback. I'm not taking anything away from him, but he can't. Le- I don't see him leading a team to the uh, Super Bowl. Scott, do you agree with that? Uh, just the addition of a franchise quarterback in Tampa Bay is lets them help themselves the most. Just one single pick. I hate the put this out there, but if you don't have a franchise quarterback, you don't have a team. So the fact, I do agree that Tampa Bay helped themselves by getting a franchise quarterback. They won the draft out of the NFC South. They have probably the best draft, but it's not because they went out and got a franchise quarterback. They had the number one overall pick. They were going to get a franchise quarterback regardless. What they really did that helped them was they spent two picks on two guys we're going to help shore up an offensive line that was one of the worst in the NFC South last year. They've got a guy who's going to slot right in at left tackle in Donovan Smith. They've got a guy who's going to slot right in at right guard in Ali Marpet. They're going to have no issues with either guy. And I'm a big fan of Ali Marpet. I've been, you know, yeah, you saw him. Yeah, you You saw him in the um, in in the Senior Bowl, right? Yeah, I saw. Well, the thing is, it wasn't just the Senior Bowl. It was the entire Senior Bowl practice week. When you saw Danny Shelton unable to get around Ali Marpet, you're like, damn, this guy's pretty damn good. He just sat there, and every time Shelton came right at him, he just, come on, man, I know you got more than this. Just the entire time. And I talked to him about it. And there were times when he was doing, they were doing run blocking drills, and he was going right up against Danny Shelton. You're like, well, all right, well, Danny Shelton's a run stopper. He should win this battle. It's okay if you lose to him and you're Ali Marpet. No big deal. 
No. Allie threw him to the ground, got on top of him, and just kept pushing him down, like stay down. I was like, all right, he's got some nastiness to him. He's got some Harvey doll to him. I like this guy. And then from then on, and then I found out he was a Jewish guy, so me being a Jewish guy, <laughs> I had to be like, damn. All right, so he's an angry guy. He's a Jewish guy. He's just a really all-around good dude. I'm take I, like, that's my boy. That's going to be my boy throughout the whole draft process. I don't care where he goes. He can go to the Saints. I don't care where he goes. <laughs> he's my boy. So he went to the Bucks. so I'm okay with that because I don't really hold anything against the Bucks because it's the Bucks. Like, Atlanta, Atlanta and the Bucks had no rivalry. They didn't really start, like, playing each other until 2002 in the first place, and there's never been that, like, oh, we hate you, oh, we hate you. It's either the Bucks have been really good and the Falcons suck, or the Falcons have been really good and the Bucks suck. Yeah. Bucks have been bad for pretty long, now, for a, a yeah. good stretch right now, and I think that that is it's something that we don't maybe talk about enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, because they, they haven't had a franchise quarterback. Ever? No, I'm saying in the past, like... Forever. Since 2002, they haven't had a franchise quarterback. Right. right. Who was it in 02? They had Brad Johnson. Uh, Brad Johnson, and they had Brad Johnson for like a decade before they won that Super Bowl. Did they have him for that long? No. They had him for at least like four or five years. No, it was it was Trent Dilfer, Trent Dilfer, and, and then it was Sean King, and then Brad Johnson came in, and. No, maybe three, 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 maybe four years. Yeah, they, maybe had, three. they had them up until about 2004, though, because they were good yeah. the entire time they had them. Right. That's what right. I remember about him. Yeah. Okay, who do you think um, – let's talk about best value pick in the NFC South right now. Uh, it seems like uh, – who do you think the best value pick on your team was, Scott? Oh, Grady Garrett. Yeah. By far. He was a, a mid-second round talent, and Atlanta got him at the top of the fifth round. Yeah. Plus the fact that he's Jesse Tuggle's son. I mean, and you're the Atlanta Falcons, and you got a guy who's hanging in your ring of honor. You got his son. I mean, you can't do better than that. You really can't. A legacy. A, a, a Falcons legacy, and not just like any legacy. Jesse Tuggle, who's a fan favorite. So Falcons fans go, oh, we got Jesse's son? Hell Yeah. <laughs> Instant fan favorite. Like fit, like when Jesse was there, and then her, he didn't know who it was going to be. He found out that his son was being picked by the Falcons when that lady announced it while he was standing behind her. So he goes, wait, Grady Jarrett, that's my son. <laughs> Holy shit, my son just got drafted by the Falcons. He was just like celebrating like, yeah, yeah, right behind the lady. And I'm sitting there like, I would do the exact same thing if I was in Jesse's shoes. What up, my ninjas? What up, what up, We're talking about how Jesse Tuggle should be excited that his son got drafted by the Falcons. He should Why be. Why he got a different name? Uh, that has a little bit... I'm not worried about that whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> that has a little bit more to do with Jesse Tuggle and his wife and divorcing and a couple other things in there, so... I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's like a man behind the curtain situation. Don't worry about a man's personal life. It's none of your business. Oh, and, um, yeah. yeah. Out of the one guy that's all over people about spreading <laughs> their integrity <laughs> and all of this mess is that... He divorced, his wife. Your... he divorced his wife and then he had a kid with a lady that he was dating for a couple of years and then he that wound he up... Didn't claim? No, he, he claimed him the entire time. He claimed him, paid child support, everything. So there's never been an issue there. It's just... Does the How does that work? Does the last name... There is a killer echo going on. Uh, is there... What does that go? Does the mother get the last name? Well, it's because of the mom's last name. Does that is that normal that the mother usually gets claimed to that? In that kind of situation... I don't know. I've never had an illegitimate kid. Out of wedlock, yes. Sorry. Gets think, yeah, okay. out of wedlock, okay. it's the mom's choice on whether it's a Jarrett baby or a Tuggle baby. So, 
right. it. Uh, Along so, with being a Jared baby. <laughs> Jared baby. That must have got her some extra couple of bucks. Uh, speaking of bucks, uh, what we were, Joey, we were, gonna, we were asking right now, instead of just asking overall value pick, we were just, I was asking uh, Scott first of that best value pick in their draft. Now I'm going to ask Gene. Gene, best value pick in the dra- 2015. And don't say Jameis Winston. No, I'm not going to. Um, I know you guys are going. You guys are going to laugh at me, but Kenny Bell, uh, the wide receiver from Nebraska, uh, you'll you'll see him. At, we're putting going to probably put him in as a slot receiver. Uh, if you get a chance to go watch him, he's a very fast and a very physical receiver. And Six I don't one. know. I don't know if you guys remember the hit uh, where Nebraska Nebraska against Wisconsin, the hit that. Um, was heard around the world. Uh, if you go out, if you get a chance to go out on YouTube and look at it, it's amazing. The kid's very physical, and uh, I think it was a great pickup in the in the fifth round. And uh, I, you're going to see him definitely. See, the reason why my brow is all furrowed right now is I would have said the same thing, but for different reasons. And it's because I had Kenny Bell as that third round value, and you guys got him towards the end of the fifth or right at the beginning of the sixth. I forget which. Yes. So I was like, that's a really good pick. And I thought that when they made the pick, I'm like, man, that's a really good pick. I'm so glad Atlanta has three corners now. <laughs> Joe, I, Joe, I got something for you right here. Let's see if you can hear it. Hold on. Money. What kind of terrorist are you? <laughs> the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal, Joe. Uh, we're glad you can come in here and represent the Carolina Panthers. We've got a fifth-round wide receiver uh, for the Bucks. That is a value pick. We have a uh, Grady Jarrett moose tackle, uh, fifth-round pick for the Falcons. Who's the best value pick for the Carolina Panthers? Um, I think the best value pick, in my opinion, is the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. Um, Daryl, I think his last name is Daryl Williams. Williams. Yeah, I really believe he was um, a surprise to be there for us, and we were quick to snatch him up. I really think that made our draft. If we would have come out of this draft without an offensive tackle, there would have been a lot of questions, I think. Um, but the fact that we were able to get him late really, I think, solidified our draft. Okay, um, let's let's just say I disagree with that one. Why is that? Because I I had Daryl Williams as a mid, probably seventh round pick. God. And taking. Thought he was going on. He was upset he didn't get. He was upset he didn't get uh, graded. Uh, picked up on third in third. Exactly. I I had him in the fifth. He he's not. See, to me, I don't think he's that good. Um, he's a right tackle only. I actually liked him better as a guard, but even then I didn't like him more than a fourth or a fifth round as a guard. Um, but as a right tackle, I think you could do way worse than finding your starter in the fourth round. That being said, your best value is Cameron Artis Payne. Like I do like that pickup. I do yeah. like that pickup. Because if he wasn't 24 years old, he's a second-round talent. He's 25, I think. No, he, he's 24. I looked up his birthday. Maybe he'll be so he's only, maybe he'll he's only be got like five years. The season starts. Oh, he'll be twenty-five when the season starts. Jeez. Either way, he can only he's a one-contract player, and that's mm-hmm. the real big reason why he fell to the fifth round. But in that one contract, he's going to be very good for y'all, and he's a very high mm-hmm. mileage one contract guy. So he might be like a a Michael Turner, where he's thirty-one years old, getting a thousand yards. Gene, why nice. do you think? Why do you? Why did you put uh, Daryl Williams in the fifth? Just uh, from what I've been seeing on the on the film, I saw his footwork, and I just kind of I know a lot of that's coachable, and uh, he's kind of a grabber when it comes to the run game. He's he's I worry about penalties and stuff like that. I guess was was my thing why I didn't really put him uh, at a higher higher pick. Joe, we have a pretty good offensive line coach now in Massock, isn't that isn't it something like that? Yeah, came from. Um... Baltimore? I think he was in Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you can uh, help to coach? Is you know, is that a raw it's guy? Coachable. Just yeah, you know, the handsiness. You know, a lot of coaches. I feel like offensive line coaches actually teach you to hold in the NFL. Of course they do. They teach you to, you to, 
get away <laughs> with it. So right. like, hey, that's he's already got a leg up on that. Exactly. And the footwork is something that will come. Um, <laughs> he has strength. He has size. He's got the ability. It's just a matter of putting it all together. And that is why he was he was drafted late because. You know, they know they have some work to do with him. Maybe even if he sits a year behind Remmers. But I do tell you this. I think he is going to battle with Remmers for that starting spot at right, Dude, right tackle. Remmers nice sucks that. so bad in pass. I know you think he does, Scott, but he played well last year. For yeah, us. he did. No, in he pass did. protection. Remmers is an awful I think pass protector. What, I think what they saw with Remmers is that uh, it wasn't, necessarily I think he started to get figured out a little bit on te- right. you know with the film and so the he that kind of wore off as things went on but you know what is nice is that here's the thing that we picked Rimmers up off the street and had to start him we had there's no other option so now what you got is you've yep. got some depth there to create competition yes and even if it and you know these guys can make each other better that way instead of uh being the only guy, I think that doesn't create anything. We'd like to welcome Greg Barber intent, at Intense GB to the show. Saints writer, thank you for joining Southbound and Down, our brother, the final piece. <laughs> Greg, I don't cut hair, Barber. What's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> I don't cut hair, Barber. <laughs> 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 I shave my head. I ain't messing with nobody else's. Exactly. No need, right no need to brother. cut my hair, Barber. Um, <laughs> what? My question for you, Greg. We've been going around and asking each team what their best value pick was oh. in the 2015 draft. Tell us who was the uh, New Orleans Saints' best value pick. Wow, that's a tough one because I think we got a couple of good guys. But the one I think I, I think I, I, a lot of other writers agree with as well. I think it is Davis Tull. I got a feeling that kid right there is gonna be yeah. uh, a really, really good player. I mean, I see, I see a really good edge rusher. He can put his hand in the dirt if he can play. If he can play standing up as well, that would, that would actually be a nice plus. But I, I mean, I love, the, I do love that pickup. I really like him, and I think the one thing I, I think I like with this whole draft, for the most part, other than of course Grayson, and I and I and even with Pete, I think. We have we got a lot of players who actually can help us this year. They can come He's in. He's gonna start for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see a way that Andrew Speed doesn't start for you. I, I agree. agree. I'm with you. I'm with you because I I, I think he, if, I, what I think happens is that Armstead might go right tackle, and Speed will be our left tackle. And I think Streif. I don't think he gets cut. I think he more than anything he goes to the bench. But I'd be I have a hard I would have I would be really hard pressed to think that Andrew Speed does not start. I think no, that, I think that Armstead right. slides into left guard, honestly. I that could and that could be a possibility too, but but from what I understand from Payton's uh, uh perspective, Payton says that all three are tackles. It's just gonna be a battle on who's gonna do it. Because I'm assuming what it is he he doesn't wanna kind of short Lolito a little bit. But if the Saints, you know, Lale Collins may Saints are interested in him. If Lael Collins decides to stay in New Orleans and go, they go to New Orleans, Melito probably might be on the bench. No, I think he'd be. I think Lael would be your starting left guard. Well, and because then, the fact, because you got Jari Evans for one, at least for one more year. So he's what a I'm thinking, somebody, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna sit. It won't be Evans, I don't think. So you think no need to talk guard? about Lel Collins going to um, the Saints, brothers, guys. He's coming to Carolina. <laughs> I don't he know. Wants to, he wants to play with his homeboy Trey Turner. What's he, he wants to get a start. He's going to be a franchise tackle in two years when the Trey Panthers. When New, was Payton sees him as a guard, so Payton wants to make him a guard, which I think he, I think I think he'll be a, still a guard. You put him with with Unger. And then, of course, you got Pete. I, I, I don't know. That's going to be a nasty offensive line really quick. Uh, Joe, what do you think about that? Lel Collins, he's got a chance. He's, he could stay close to home uh, and get his crawfish uh, close to home, or he can come to Carolina. Uh, after two years, he would become a restricted free agent. Mm-hmm. He would be ready to sign a mega deal if he played oh, well already. That's not how it works. Well, I think it's two. Not how it works at all. 
he has to play at least three full years before he can renegotiate his contract. I think he gets to have a restricted free agent tender after year two. No, not the full. No, he'd be an exclusive rights free agent after year two, which is league minimum tender. Right. So he has to sign a three-year deal as an unrestricted free agent. As an undrafted, unrestricted free agent, you have to sign a three-year deal. Yes, he does. Deal minimum. Yeah. But you can have a you can have a bonus of up to eighty-five grand. On right. Exactly. Well, that's even better for the Panthers. Right, but after okay, and so after year three, happens. after year three, though, he could negotiate uh, as a restricted or unrestricted free agent. Well, actually, what's he restricted? He he'd be unrestricted, but I mean, they can also. Franchise tender him too, which right. is going to up him. I mean, it's going to up his pay big time. After Jeez. three years, he's a restricted free agent. Yeah. So he'd have a one-year restricted free agent tender. They could right, put right. a first-round uh, tender, tender on him. Yeah. They could put a second-round tender on him. But, and which if they put a first-round tender on him, they might lose him. Yeah. Because that's very true. If Lel Collins is playing like he should. Yeah. Somebody would be willing okay. to give up a first round. Oh, 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 yeah. oh well, We would just go ahead and sign a franchise deal. We would be ready to go ahead and make him our guy and pay him. But, but you got to remember something. They, they got rid of poison pills. They did get rid but of poison I, pills. But you guys I, can always match. I'm just saying they. you could put out there, hey, we want to put a first round tender on Lyle Collins. Put the first round tender on him. Pay him because yeah. it's a guaranteed tender. And then you've got Lyle Collins on a guaranteed tender. Yep. You've got – actually, you've got Lowell Collins probably negotiating with other teams, getting his market yep. value, and then you've got the franchise. You just signed a long-term deal that way. Yep. Or you give him up for a first-round pick to a team that's picking in the 20 to 25 range who's probably right. going to pick him up in a heartbeat because if yep. you can give up a 20 – the number 20 pick yep. for a potential starting left guard. Without a doubt. Pick, without a doubt. Yeah, we, we would never do that. that. We would just that. try to keep him forever. Yeah, well, you've got to tackle for you too, so – but you guys would have to give them a long term, yes, really good deal. Term. And that's New what Orleans are prepared to do. And by that time, time, yeah, well, by that time, Carolina will too. Carolina will be out of this cap. We'll have that money right. next year. We've got that yeah, money next year, too. guys. The Saints will too. The Saints will actually be way under the cap next year. We have something like some crazy absurd amount of money coming to us next year. Yeah. Um. Okay. Go take All right, move it. Moving on from that, but overall, yeah, that Davis Tull will be the value pick I think in our draft is the final answer. What was the name? Cole. Tull. Davis Tull. Davis Tull. Where Davis is Tull. Yeah. He is. For for and my I hate country, to put it, I, he, I hate to put it on, but when you see him, when you see him like with his hand in the dirt like that, he, I get that JJ Watt feel into the guy. Whoa. He's got Whoa, a little pad. I mean, that's all. And I'm saying that's no. very, very high. No, 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 no. That's Whoa. very, very high. He got, he, he got some, he got some moves. He got some nice pass rushing moves. He, he definitely got a high motor. And I mean, I like the guy. I do. I, I think he's gonna do Where well. Where did he play? Uh, got, was, was, it was a small college. Tennessee, got, Jack, he played at Chattan- Tennessee, Chattanooga. Yeah, Tennessee, Chattanooga. And and he does have ridiculous athleticism on my, yes. on my athletic index. He posted up one of the highest scores I've ever seen. He's mm-hmm. above 170, which, yeah. it, to use Dragon Ball Z terms, is the equivalent of over 9,000. Mm. What the like, hell is Dragon Ball Z? It's a, it's a TV show that your children yeah. probably Yeah, J- Japan anime. <laughs> yeah. Japan anime? Exactly. Hey, Japan Where do you nerds get the time for this? He's a beast. He's I a don't superman. Why. I don't watch it, but I mean, this dude is a beast. I mean, I, I, I've I looked at film on him. I mean, I looked at some tape and stuff, everything I could find on him. I like his moves. I like, I, I really, really see him. All right. Well, making. all I can say is the level of, of playing ability of the opponents going from Tennessee Chattanooga to the NFL is going to be quite significant. So yeah, he's going to go I'm from not... playing the Citadel to playing NFL players. Yeah, and I'm not down. I'm not bad mouthing him in any way. I'm just saying it's going to be an adjustment. There's going to be a serious adjustment. Nobody and nobody's arguing that point. But I'm just saying when he catches on, I got a feeling he's going to catch on. I really do. I don't think he's going to have a problem catching on. That's the thing because you got to think about it. I mean, the way I look at it is he's he's definitely playing bigger, faster guys. 
But I mean, he he's got enough pass rushing moves. He got a lot of other stuff that I think he'll be he'll catch on. And he'll be fine. He'll he will. I I'm not too worried about him. All right. Well, if he's anything like JJ Watt, then the Saints. I just like I just coming off that edge. I just really like his moves and stuff. I mean, like I said, that's that's high praise. I mean, that's that's way that's probably way too high you praise. Think? For point. Athletically, he's like JJ Watt. And, right, and Outside that's kind of, of what I'm thinking, but, he's not anywhere close. Yeah, but but that's what I'm kind of saying. I guess, and that's probably what I'm putting it more or less as far as athlete, his athleticism. He's freakish. Yeah, yeah. freak athlete. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, I can't wait to see all our our players that we thought were our best value pick play and see how uh, how it works out. But that will be later on in the season. Yeah. Um, Gene, do you think Tampa addressed their biggest need? Yeah, the offensive line, and you know, we've all talked. We talked about it last season. Uh, the awesome offensive line was a, a glaring hole that we had. Uh, I think getting a, finally having an offensive coordinator, a real offensive coordinator, which the Buccaneers have not had since John Gruden was here, and prior to that we didn't have uh, even then. Maybe Les Steckel is the closest thing to a decent offensive coordinator outside of Nickel? John Gruden that we've had. Les Steckel? Les Steckel was, yeah. Les Steckel? Les All right, all right. So... So I mean that just, me. that just that just goes to show you I mean how how bad it's been. That's, that's Correct me bad. if I'm wrong, but isn't the new offensive coordinator what's his name? Dirk Cutter. Dirk Cutter. Yeah. Where was he at last year? Atlanta. He was in Atlanta. New offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Yep. Yes, he was. Why did he leave Atlanta? Atlanta? He left Atlanta so, because Atlanta's entire coaching staff got fired all in one fell swoop. Yeah, everybody. Had, like four guys. You know, they kept Keith Armstrong. They kept yeah. uh, Wayne Ryan, Harm, Ryan. the coach of the yeah. tight ends. Yeah. They, catch, they kept um, they kept Brian Cox because yeah, they definitely got Cox, yeah, because they didn't want to die. And then uh, they kept the super <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Brian Cox. Brian Cox. Brian Cox. talking about Brian Cox Brian from the Brian. New York Jets and yeah, Miami yeah, Dolphins, right? Brian Cox from the New York Jets, the crazy son of a bitch. Y'all gonna yeah. fire me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would kill you. He would. Come on, man. Y'all better, y'all better bring in a lot of security if y'all gonna fire him. You better have you better have two rows of guys with guns. You better call the Atlanta PD. <laughs> Brian Cox keep his job. Yeah, yeah, you better fire him for <laughs> sure. So, Teleporter. Oh shit. So, Gene, now that we now that we know Dirk Cutter is the offensive coordinator, do you see them implementing the same sort of system that Atlanta was using there on offense? Uh, the reason I'm asking is Atlanta's got that fast track they're indoors, their eyes. Whereas Tampa, you know, they're outside on natural grass. The speed isn't going to be there. Isn't going to be similar. I don't think. The receivers yeah. don't have the same speed either, though. Mm-mm. No. And and that's what what he, there was an interview with uh, Dirk Carter earlier this week, and he did say that he's going to try to speed up the pace. I don't think that it would be the same as what you have in Atlanta, but I think it will be a little bit faster pace. And yeah. to be honest, not having an offensive coordinator last year, all this is new. So yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to to see what, what he's going to bring. I know he did work. He worked wonders for Matt Ryan uh, coming into the 2012 season. I thought he did an excellent job with that offense and took them to that next level where they were able to go to the playoffs and, and actually compete. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean All right. Cutter's a, he, he's a decent offense coordinator. I mean, I, I wasn't sure exactly how he, you know, what he would do with Tampa, but it's definitely he's definitely a hell of a lot better than what they had last year. And he, like you know, so it's, huh? I'm a I'm a Falcon fan. I'm gonna tell you right now, I like Dirk Cutter. I would have been happy if they kept Dirk Cutter and just said, hey, run a zone blocking scheme with Dirk Cutter's passing offense. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm. You know, I didn't want to lose them. Y'all got a really good one there. Do they have? Does Tampa have the tight end in place to uh, help that offense, like Tony Gonzalez did? Uh, with, with, with the Austin oh, Safarian Jenkins and and Myers, oh, yeah. and even even Luke Cotter, Luke Stalker is going to uh, have to step his game up too, in yeah. in order to you know be a part of that offense. 
Yeah. Now, Tony and I were talking the other day when Atlanta gave the Panthers fits. It was because Tony Gonzalez was such a threat in the middle of the field. It just opened up so much other options for uh, Meg Ryan. And uh, that's where Julio could excel, and that's where Roddy White was able to excel. He, you know, we had to respect the middle of the field. So that's why I ask about the tight end in Tampa. None of them are really proven. I know Jenkins is a, what, his second-year guy now? Second year. Yeah, yeah. second year. And Stalker's a little bit more of a veteran, but he really hasn't shown much, right? Yeah, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if it's the, the coaching. Once again, we had um, – Sullivan was the offensive coordinator who was a rookie offensive coordinator. Uh, I just was not really impressed with him as a, as a coordinator for the team and, you know, making playing to the strengths of the team when uh, Shiano was the head coach in, um, in, in those years. So uh, I think that what we have now is better. I think that you have somebody that can coach the team up or coach the offense up and, get players to play to their strengths and use that uh, in the offense. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Last question for Eugene, um, at least on this segment. What areas do they still need to work on there in, in Tampa? Uh, I would have to say safety. Uh, safety is something that I'm kind of concerned about. Uh, not have, you know, Deshaun Golston and Mark Barron, you, you know my opinion of those two guys. They couldn't cover so they had to go, especially, you know, you have to be able to cover as a safety as well as tackle. And, uh, you know, right now we didn't really address that in the draft. And with the unrestricted free agents that they brought in, I still don't – or undraft, excuse me, undrafted free agents they brought in, I, I still don't think they've really addressed that. So it remains to be seen what they do to, to fill those needs. But uh, I would say that, and a, a, definitely an edge rusher, uh, I know we got some players in, but I have not physically seen what they're capable of doing in our system here in Tampa, so I can't really say that we've actually fixed that problem until seeing them play. Okay, so two things here. You're saying both of your issues are on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Okay, and I wanted to ask you, you guys lost um, one of your backers, didn't you, to free agency, Mason? Mason Foster. He's gone. He was a pretty solid player for you guys too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was pretty solid. Uh, he was a starter from day one, and he trial by fire. And you know, I thought he was a good player. I really hated to hated to lose him. I thought that he provided depth, even if they went in and went out and upgraded. You still have a rotation that that you could work with. But right. he's in Chicago now, so you know he had to move forward. Right. All right, Scott. Go out and upgrade. Scott, I'm going to ask you, um, where did Atlanta falter in this draft? Uh, they forgot to get a left guard more than anything else. Other than that, I feel like they had a really good draft. No, I have to I agree with you. I have to agree with you, man. I think that they had the best draft in the division. Honestly, I really feel that way. I mean, I thought they got the best player in the draft at eight overall. Um... And I said that before the draft, that whoever gets Beasley is going to be a very, very, very happy team. And I just, I love what they did. They said, hey, let's upgrade the defense. Let's get all of what we need for this Dan Quinn scheme. Mm -hmm. And let's just perfect it. Let's get Jalen Collins a big corner. Let's get Vic Beasley. Let's get Grady Jarrett. Let's build it up front in that corner. Mm -hmm. Then let's go and get a wide receiver who can actually upgrade from Harry Douglas. And they did that getting uh, good old Tony's boy, uh, Justin Hardy. Oh, that made me sick. That I'm made so me so sick about it. Tony, then they, no. <laughs> then, they got a true, then they got a true zone-style running back in Tevin Coleman, who I'm a big fan of. Um, and then the last two picks are just – they were kind of throwaways. Jake Rogers and um, – Akeem King. I think King ends up being a solid like fourth or fifth corner and special teams guy. And I think um, Jake Rogers ends up being that backup swing tackle. But those guys aren't going to be anything more than that as seventh rounders. Um, I really I like um, the the guy from Clemson that you got and at number eight, his name escapes me now. 
Vic Beasley. Beasley. I like Vic Beasley a lot. I watched him play at Clemson a lot. I like what he can do. I really have a big question mark with him, though, as far as holding that point of attack in the rushing game. I don't have an issue with it because... I know you don't. Because <laughs> I, know what, I know what his function is in the scheme. As a Leo, his job isn't, hey, let's hold up the offensive tackle and do this. It's, hey, let's play the outside shoulder of the offensive tackle and contain the outside edge. That's all he's got to do. Yeah, but sometimes it does, I mean, like, you can scheme and scheme and scheme and scheme, but sometimes you got to make a damn play. I'm not worried about Big Beasley making a damn play in the run game. He did pretty well at that college, especially when he was asked to be that in college. All right, my question, I got one question about Beasley is 6'3", 246. Um... You got him as a linebacker. Can can he is he gonna be able? To, uh, two questions. Can he drop back into coverage as well as you need him to to do so? One, he's um, not a linebacker. He's a Leo. He's a defensive end that'll stand up every now and again. But he's a defensive end. Think John Abraham's okay. role in two thousand and eight to two thousand and eleven. But then just have him listed as outside linebacker on NFL.com. That's why I was I said that. The other thing I have the is the official site has him as a defensive end. 246. He gets to Cam Newton. Uh, what's going to stop Cam Newton from knocking him down? Uh, the fact that Cam Newton went down from a 230-pound linebacker named Paul Warlow. That has nothing to do with it. Okay. Is that? I mean, is he going to be big enough to to? Uh, is it only the speed game for those types of guys? What happens it's, if they get the power? They convert the speed that they have into power because of their leg drive. So they can take down Cam Newton's, the Dante Culpeppers, the Josh Freemans, the Jameis Winstons of the world who are 250-pound, foot five quarterbacks. They can take them down. I'm not worried about that. Tackling is tackling. It's not this ridiculous physics equation. It's right. can you get leverage and can you pull a guy down. It's all technique. You remember a couple of years ago there was a guy that came out of Wake Forest as a number one pick. Um I want to say his last name was Maven. Aaron Maven. Yeah, I think Seattle drafted him number one. Yeah. He um yeah. he was right. he reminds me so much of Beasley, or I should say Beasley reminds me so much of him with the speed game, you know, the using that speed Beasley, to get around the, the edge. Beasley and Maven is Maven wasn't productive in college at all. Didn't show any of his talent in college. He was a pure athletic projection. Yeah. He's going to all of this in college on film that he could go out there and own offensive tackles that were NFL caliber. Wasn't Maven the number one pick that year? No. Maybe he was, was like the number 11 pick, and he went to the Bills. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he was, he was, he was like top 10, top 12, something in that range. But Maven should have never gone that high, and Maven no. was never that good in the first place. No, I think it was just the combine that, that, that brought him up. When he was in the combine, and he tested well, and then all of a sudden everybody kind of want, was – with drooling over the dude. Yeah. Well, I don't. The, I don't maybe question, it's not fair to Big Beasley at all. I don't question Beasley's speed because he's got it for days. There's no issue there. Like I said, my concern is is the physical nature of the NFL, whether or not he's big enough. And I mean, maybe they can put some more weight on him, you know, without affecting his speed too much. So we'll see. We'll see. I um, think that if you miss at pick number eight, uh, we would have problems. I mean, I, you don't think this is going to be a miss. My my question, though, about the, the last question, because I think, uh, boy, you look at the top. You look at the first five picks of the Atlanta Falcons draft, and you just don't see anything wrong with it. You know, it's like some asshole fan drafted it on his phone Uh like two months ago, <laughs> like the best. I mean, I mean, think. I mean, listen to these names: Vic Beasley, Jalen Collins, Tevin Coleman, Justin Hardy. Now, I mean, we love him, but Grady Jarrett. I mean, those are five. I mean, some solid ass and picking right there. Mm -hmm. uh, my question about the Atlanta Falcons is: is I don't see anything to do with a tight end up here, and I know that that was something that you guys struggled with last year. What's the status on that? Apparently, they want to give Levine Toilolo a second chance. Let him have another shot. You were not I'm a big not, fan of him last year, Scott. I'm not a big fan of him this year, but... <laughs> 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 I, 
That's why y'all have me on the show. I don't sugarcoat it. But, um, if he can give them 30 catches for 350 yards and, like, five touchdowns, that'll for be the season? Than, yeah, for the season. Oh, that'll Jesus. be more than enough to be a stopgap for a year. And then they can get a stronger tight end in next year's draft. Jeez, it really wasn't a good tight end draft. That's why I was a very, very surprised um, that you guys didn't do something in free agency about that. Well, and they can still go out and get Jermaine Gresham, who's sitting out there just waiting for his back to heal up. That's a possibility. Gosh, that's a terrible thing to wait for. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I know. Yeah. We had a, we had a help with the with the slip disc. I'm again. There's no such thing as a. Uh, there's no such thing as a small back surgery. Right. But there is a such thing as having a back surgery in January and hoping that it's going to be healed by the time you get to camp in August, and that being a realistic timetable. And from what he got, it's a realistic timetable, at least from like the doctors that I talked to and. Follow on Twitter and hang out. Uh, with is is his injury similar to, to uh, is his injury similar to what uh, Tony Romo had? Uh, I want to say it's, it, it's not that it's not that it, those were actual bones breaking. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are more of a pain thing than anything else. Mm -hmm. His was a, a slip. That's what Cam Newton had exactly. Yeah, his is more of a slip disc than anything else. Okay, so it's just got to be put back in place and given time to heal. Really, yeah, that's all exactly. that you can do there is time. That's the biggest thing. Exactly. Um, Greg, we're going to move on to you. Um, I want to ask you why the Saints went with uh, Garrett Grayson. Well, I think I think they were looking in the future to a point. Me, well, and I, mean, actually, I know they were looking at quarterbacks. But yes. Well, actually, tell you the truth, one Garrett Grayson, other than Jameis Winston, was probably the only one in the draft that came from a pro style background. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually, I liked him. I actually liked Grayson better than I liked Petty. I, that, Grayson was the one that I was hoping they would get. That surprised me that they went with him over Petty. I I, I like Petty. I do, but I I, I yeah. think me I like Grayson a little better. I felt like he was because he was a pro style. He had a pro style background. Uh, pretty good teacher with the coach uh, McElwain, who's now in Florida. So I felt like mm. you know coming from that offense, he would do well. And I felt also to the fact that he, at this point in time, he, Breeze has two years left on his contract, and who knows if he's going to extend. But it, in two years, it gives Grayson that time to kind of get to know the offense, mm. not under any pressure, and he can you know basically come in, you know Just maybe. Two years. Now, now maybe you know maybe they use him into a point as leverage against Breeze if he if he can prove that he can handle it, mm -hmm. and, and you know that he can come in and play. But I mean, I liked what I saw out of Grayson myself. So for me, I actually that's the guy I really I mean I really did truly want him um, over Petty. That's I mean, and I like Petty. If they picked Petty, I wouldn't have had an argument. But I just like I did. I just kind of liked Grayson uh, a little bit better. Well, for me. Joey, for Joey me. do you think your criticism of this pick is a little petty? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the pick... <laughs> oh, God, I love Tony. You know, I, I, got, I think I am. Been I've been waiting pretty for pretty like two and a half minutes. minutes. <laughs> a lot of people um, don't like the pick because they felt like it was a wasted pick that could have been used against something else. I, I strongly I disagree. disagree. I disagree. I strongly disagree. No, I think, I, think, I think you definitely had to draft a quarterback yeah, this year just... Yeah. Because of where Drew Brees is in his career, right, right. And it, but also too, it was also common sense. Because let's say like this, for Brees has been with the team about ten years. That's fair. It was common knowledge if Drew Brees went down, we were screwed. Mm -hmm. Whoever came in after that was not gonna get the team to the playoffs. Guess what? You're still screwed. Well, I don't. I don't know. But I mean, like I said, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right now, right. Let's say right now, because because Grayson is rookie and stuff like that, you probably would say yes. But let's say a year from now, maybe two years from now, if this guy catches on and Breeze gets hurt, let's say a year or two from now, maybe it's a different story. Maybe he can no, come in. And it won't be. Well. It won't be. He did not show anything that said I'm a pro quarterback. Watching him when when we were in Mobile, he did not look anything like what he was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And we were all expecting him to be the guy who lit it up, and he just looked like shit. 
Like, right. you just well, look like what total did you, what did fucking you, what did you see? shit. But what it's still but nothing. Nothing. I saw horrible accuracy. I saw a guy who wound up his throws, had awful mechanics, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and not all the things well. that all the things he's working on. Those are things you will work on. That they'll work no, on over those. Those are things that he can work on, but no time behind Drew Brees is going to give him enough time to fix himself. He he just doesn't have it. There's not enough time to fix Garrett Grayson or any quarterback. The only quarterback that was fixable that was drafted in the late rounds was Brett Hundley. And I thought the fact that they went Garrett Grayson over Brett Hundley was the stupidest thing they could have done in the I world. I disagree because, I mean, I thought Hundley was way too damn raw. Hundley, Hundley was way too damn raw. You have two years to get the dude up to speed. Exactly. And the same and thing with Grayson. And, and want, Grayson, who actually Grayson, Grayson, audibly Grayson have will problem. never be I, what Hundley I, is. I get it. I get it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Grayson will never be close to what Hundley is. They were stupid because they didn't take the guy with the stronger arm, with the better field vision, with the better frame, with the better experience against well, better I mean, talent. I guess we'll it see it, too. no you. sense to do what they did. No we'll sense. See. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I, I, did, I did like Hunley, and I was shocked at how oh, long I liked Hunley. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, he was, to me, I felt like he was the rawest of all the quarterbacks. Right, I would agree with that. He was the rawest. He had the biggest upside. Going on. It doesn't matter if he's yeah, raw. You've got all the time in the world to get him better. So what makes you think that you could don't have the same thing with Grayson? You can't say the same thing with you can't because say that Grayson doesn't have anywhere that that close to the ceiling. And this is the ceiling the that Grayson has. has. His name same is Andy Grayson. Dalton. This is the ceiling Grayson has. His name's Andy Dalton. This is the ceiling that Brett Henley that Hunley has. His name is Aaron Rodgers. Oh bull. I need more Cam Newton. I I see that. Even, I mean, even Cam Newton's a good team. I I either. Either. Top ten quarterback. That's my point. You either got a top ten quarterback. Well, you got Potential. a fringe purgatory quarterback in Andy Dalton. That's what you've got. That's your that's your gap. And you went, and you got, you know, you have two years. You went, and you got the shittier quarterback because Jeff Ireland is running your draft now. Congrats. Okay. Did the uh, did the Saints address all their needs? You think, Greg? Yeah, I I, I think so. I mean, I I think a lot of people thought that we should have drafted a wide receiver. But, I, I mean, I like the set we got. I like the receivers we got, for one. And, number two, we did change the wide receiver coaches. So, I think that that switch from Henry, Henry Eller, because I think ever since we went to Henry Eller, our wide receivers weren't getting separation. I just saw a lot of things that I did not see before. Number two is that I think with the new old wide receiver coach, we'll give him a shot and see what happens. I mean, I, I so I think, for the most part, they did. Another thing was the tight end situation. They picked up a couple of guys from the undrafted free agent. I, I also I do like Josh Hill. Uh, I don't I don't expect him to replace Jimmy Graham the same production, but I expect them to be able to do some other things that that they didn't do with that they didn't have to do with Graham. So was I mean I think that, level, was there a level of interest in Funches there in uh, New Orleans? Not that I know of. I mean, may, and maybe they maybe they thought about him. I Me mean, particularly, I'm okay with Funches, but I I probably I wouldn't. Have, you don't think he's a Jimmy Graham esque kind of player? No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that particularly. Me, me particularly, no. I didn't. But then again, you know, you never know. No, I don't think nobody saw Jimmy Graham being Jimmy Graham. No, I, I mean, other than there, Jimmy Graham. No, no. You know, I mean, I, I saw. I mean, I saw a good looking prospect when he came out and drafted. I said, "Well, some gonna be out." I didn't think he would be like the best or the second best receiver in the league. I mean, tight end in the league. So, I mean. That's I you know, like I said. I mean, at this point in time, we're guessing about really where where some of these guys are going to end up. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of Antonio Gates and Jimmy Graham. I thought he was going to be ridiculously good, and I was pissed that the Saints took him. No, well, I mean, I, I agree. I thought he was going to be good, but it's, I mean, to the heights where he was, I, I wasn't sure he was going to do that. But I knew he was going to be productive. I knew you could tell you could you had that feeling, especially when you saw him and when he got in training camp and when he got in preseason. So it's hard. I mean, like I said, it's just hard to pick. I mean, Funches maybe could have. He reminds I mean, me a lot of Jimmy Graham. Jimmy so. There's a lot of six, seven guys. That, I mean, I mean, there were a couple of guys tight ends that I looked at that I kind of like, I, but I, none of them I looked at them and said that's going to replace Jimmy Graham. I just looked sure. at it as a guy who 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 can probably produce and kind of get into the offensive play and play a role at this point. I wasn't. I, I mean, because as that's hard to do trying to replace replace oh, yeah, somebody like Jimmy. Definitely. I want to ask Gina. I want to ask Gina a question about this Funches pick. Is that uh, 
Carolina obviously moved up into the second round. Uh, in the second round, 16 spots to get Funches from 57 to 41. And the kind of rumor mill around here is that uh, the New Orleans Saints were the team that they thought would have been shopping this guy, particularly a wide receiver did not go uh, between after Funches between 41 and 57. Carolina Panthers gave up a third-round pick for him and a six-round pick. We had two six-round picks. Do you think that that was a good value for that? Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, I think it. I think it would be. That, that's somebody that could definitely help your team uh, potentially. Uh, being on the other side of Olson, uh, I. I don't know. I just I think that with the lack of weapons that you guys have, I think it's definitely gonna gonna help you out. Joey, they said that the the Car Carolina Panthers are pretty. Uh, it seems like they're they're standing strong on the idea that he is a wide receiver, right? And that they're not interested in uh, making him into a tight end. As the dust is settled on this pick, do you think it was a good move? I think it was a good move. Um, when you look back at it, I think I, initially I was um, I was perplexed as to why they made the move. But as as you know, you process it, you realize, hey, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have two guys that are six five air range, two hundred and thirty pounds that can run, plus Greg Olson down in the red zone and Tony. You pointed out yesterday our offense was struggling in the red zone last year. We did a great job 20 to 20, but when we got inside that 20 yard line, the offense would fall down and we're kicking that's field two, goals. And that's two years in a row. Right, exactly. Same so story. now we've got these big bodies where you're going to be able to throw four, three guys that are six foot four or better into the end zone. And Cam is notoriously. Don't say it. I'm so sick of hearing that. I don't really say inaccurate, but he throws a ball. He t has a tendency to throw he the ball. He throws it high. high. He does. He goes high in the end zone. And then these guys can get up there and grab it. So I think it's a good move in the long run. Um, you, you just know have who to process else throws it. it notoriously high in the red zone? Matt Ryan. It's not a bad thing. It's e either your guy gets it or no one gets it. Right. 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 Most clubs most clubs would prefer you do that anyway. Exactly. You ain't getting it or nobody because they don't want the other guy getting it. Right, and it's either going to your receiver or the, the guy in the first row there at the end. Scott, Scott, tell us why we should be pissed about this because I'm starting to come around to it. No, initially I would have been pissed because I would have been like, who the hell is playing left tackle for right. the team? Because without a left tackle, without L. Collins signing with y'all, this draft makes absolutely no sense in the first two rounds. Makes absolutely no sense without a left tackle. Like even a linebacker, just the fact that you took a linebacker in the first round honestly makes no sense. But if you get low Collins, then your first round pick you can take a luxury pick. Yeah. Then it's essentially you got, you know, a left tackle and a wide receiver in the first two rounds. When you look at it that way, you're like, okay, well, they're helping Cam Newton out. And then they had a luxury of getting a linebacker because they signed L. Collins in free agency. Now, if Collins goes to, say, I don't know, Houston, just to fuck with everybody, then you've got a completely different situation. Yeah. So you're you're trying to say that you think Shaq Thompson well, was a bad draft pick. For what yeah. you needed, Shaq Thompson was a horrible draft pick. For yeah. his value, for, name, and for how again, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me finish. For his value and for how damn good of a player Shaq Thompson is, it was a great value pick. He was the middle of the first talent. You got him at 25. You got great talent. He's a hell of a football player. He's the future Thomas Davis. Mm -hmm. And he's going to a team that's going to use him like Thomas Davis, especially considering Thomas Davis started his career out essentially as a strong side linebacker and then moved to Will once Will Witherspoon left. Yeah, he started it as a safety. Yeah, yeah. he failed as a safety for like six games, and then they yeah. moved to the strong side line. And he played the whole season. He played. Yeah. He was the reason that we beat Michael Vick. He played the in first the time. that entire season. Um, I like this. Now let me ask you this, because everybody, especially a lot of Carolina Panther fans, 
were beating the left tackle drum. Mm -hmm. Who's there at 25 when you don't know what's going on with Lel Collins? Man, he wouldn't have dropped anyway. Who's ultimately really there at 25 that is a better player overall than Shaq Thompson? That's worth that pick. Yeah, that is not not just a good guy that we think is going to maybe play left tackle, but Jay Fisher who, or TJ Clemmings. Either no, one Fisher of those was it. Both Clemmings, a lot of question marks question mark. surrounding him with surrounding his foot, foot surrounding his yes. foot because it's bone on bone and all that other crap. Yes. But in terms of pure talent and pure raw athleticism, TJ Clemmings and Jake Fisher were my number one and number three tackles in this draft. Both were top twenty grades. And both would have been perfect left tackles for your scheme. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, I felt talk. like I, all right. We'll go on. We'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Um, Greg, mm -hmm. what grade would you pass out among the division teams uh, as far as the drafts go? Let's see. I don't. Um, I mean, yeah, Atlanta had a great draft. I will give them that. That's for sure. And they probably were, they probably were probably closer to an A. I mean, because I think they did address a lot of stuff that they needed. Um, Carolina, I looked at them as a, I looked at them at this point as a C because I thought there were a couple of picks there that <laughs> may have been a little questionable. But um, Tampa, I thought Tampa got. I liked some of the. Uh, I saw some of the players that they picked up, and I, I I'm probably going to go about a B with them as well. And with my team, as much I mean, don't get me wrong, I really did like our draft because I felt like everybody could contribute. But the only reason I graded it at this point in time as a B, I, and I, I graded it as a B because I figured I'm I'm a I'm grading it hard at this point in time. As much as I really did like what they did with the draft because I felt like they felt filled a lot of holes, they got some depth, they got some guys who could play a role. I put took the Saints at a B. All right, Greg, I'm not going. I'm grading my team hard and giving them a B, Barber. Um, I for being a hard grader, that is pretty, pretty, pretty generous. Um. Anyway, we're moving on. Scott, what what grades are you passing out? All right, I'd give Atlanta a B plus, just because the Jalen Collins pick at the time didn't really make as much sense. I would Why rather have seen gone. What? I would have rather seen them gone left guard with uh, Jake Fisher than go Jalen Collins. But yeah. you just told us he was our our left tackle. What? Jake Fisher. Jake Fisher went to the Bengals. Yeah, I you know, but you're saying, saying that you said he was a tackle. Yes, yeah, he we could have drafted tackle. him at 25. He could have drafted him at left tackle. Atlanta could have drafted him at 42 as left guard. He's yeah. a good, versatile player. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, I would have been happy with that. Then there's the, um, the two seventh round picks I didn't like too much. So I think Atlanta yeah, got a B plus. Seventh round thought, pick anyway. Well, uh, Carolina got a C, I like that, I like that which would go to a Carolina got a C, which would go to a B if they signed with L. Collins. Yeah, oh, man. I think that goes to a, a B plus and A minus. It, it's a B if they get L. Collins because it's still yeah. a linebacker in the first round. Doesn't make yeah. as much sense. Uh, and then, um, and then Tampa Bay, I think they got an A. They addressed their biggest needs. Every pick they made was good value. Even yeah. the fullback in the seventh round made yeah. sense. What about this Marpet guy, Gene? Oh, I, I like I like him. I, I like I like potential. You know what? what? You Ali know what? Marpet. Carol Ali, Ali Marpet. And I uh, you, can, you, can look no, you can look no further than Scott, who actually was able to see him play in person, and he can tell you just how good this kid is. When you saw a guy at the Senior Bowl throwing around Danny Shelton like a rag doll, you wow. go, hmm, this kid's kind of special. Yeah. Alan Marpet's a fucking beast. Yeah. I wanted yeah. him on the Falcons. They could have taken him at 42, and I would have been like, hell yeah. Alan Marpet's going to destroy the NFC I was, hope, I was, I was kind of hoping New Orleans would get him, but when they, ended, when they got Kakaha and at, at third round, <laughs> I, was, I, did not, I did not think they would get him. I did not think they would get him, Kakaha. Uh, I the only thing that I have not seen this guy at all, so this is just one theory, uh, one question mark surrounding him for me. Carolina has a bad history in the past of drafting fat guys from little schools. Exactly. 
You know, so that's my only. Uh, that would be my only question. Um, okay, so who what? So where were we at there? You were saying that uh, yeah, Tampa Bay oh, yeah. and New Orleans. I would have given a C plus, just because I thought they kind of punted on their second day with Garrett Grayson and Kikaha. I thought Kikaha was a third, maybe fourth round talent that they took in the second. He's, he's got a lot of production. He's got a lot of production. No, they took him in the third. But no, they took Kikaha in the third, didn't they, or second? No, I'm sorry. You're right. I think it was second. Yeah, they took him in the second round. Second. He's got it so much second. production, but he is just so slow. But I got they had two first rounders. And he's a power. He's a power pass rusher. Yeah. That is 245 pounds. 250 pounds. Yeah, this dude got some power, so, and he got he's got, and he's he's got power. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying, I mean, he's got question about his knees because he's I, one I, that, I know, yeah, the two AC, but the last that was so, a couple of years ago, and in the last couple of years, he's asked play well. Again, I'm just throwing out why I had him lower mm-hmm. than where they picked him. Um, so I didn't see a lot of great values in the draft for them, but they did address some needs. And I still think they're that quarterback. They don't have a quarterback of the future, even though we want to sit here and argue about Garrett Grayson. If you're well, going to no, play I mean, the quarterback in the third round, oh, and how many falls into your Grayson, laps? You take Grayson, Grayson, Grayson I, the, you really can't say anything about Grayson until two years from now, the way I look at it, because because that's when. And don't worry, saying, we won't be talking about, about him in two years. <laughs> He will be, he will be in our hearts the way Andy Dalton is in the hearts of Steelers fans. No one for throwing <laughs> so many interceptions. We'll see. We appreciate him. And maybe, and maybe, 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 right. so maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So, so moving on, uh, Mr. Gene, the, the West Coast Tampa Bay Bucks fan, <laughs> what do you have to Buck say? Buck your herd. That's right. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, 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 I thought that um, I thought Carolina did real good. Shaq Thompson, I you know I've kind of heard the the talk here. I was really excited about that kid. Uh, I've gotten to watch him all last season, and I really thought that he would translate well to the pros. So you guys have a good player in him. I I wish you guys would have addressed the offensive line a little bit more. Uh, that's the one. That's probably the only thing that I saw. So I I would say uh, a B minus. Uh, for for Carolina, but they did. You guys made some good moves, and these are all players that I hope to see uh, productive on the team. Not hope to let see me, but for for your let team. Let me ask you. Let me ask you one question: Is there anybody on uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster that Shaq Thompson could be one day? Uh, Monte, he, can he yeah, be where's number fifty four as well? Levante David. Levante David, because <laughs> Levante David came into the league only like three pounds heavier than Shaq Thompson was at that time. Uh, and, you know, is kind of Shaq Thompson the future of the NFL? Is this something that is innovative, um, that type of guy that that has that, that versatile, that just sheer gaming athleticism, and that's it? I think he's unique, man. I I, I – He's a freak the way he plays, and he plays with heart. And, you, you know, just watching him, uh, I don't really know how else to describe him. I just – I wish Tampa could have gotten him. You know, that he would have been ideal, sure. you know, being in being here in the uh, Tampa 2 system. Here's what I don't get. Why are Carolina fans asking about Levante David when they have the original Levante David and Thomas Davis? Oh, sure. You're right. You're right. Well, we didn't uh, – well, because Thomas Davis is like – 31, 32, 30, 30. I think he came into the league with the same um, expectations that David did because David was a player up there in Nebraska. Mean, he yeah. was Dude, a Thomas player. Davis was a player at Georgia. And yeah, he I know. I know. He was a first round pick. He was a first round pick. He was ridi- this ridiculously good player. He well, he also had good. three ACL injuries. So, right. I mean, like, imagine what his career would have been if he had three full healthy seasons on top of it. You know? So, I mean, oh, yeah. while we have Thomas Davis, we also have only had Thomas Davis for part of the time. And we need a replacement for him um, because he is. 
30 plus and I think that this is a good move to have Shaq Thompson and Luke Keekley as your defensive pillars back there for the next God knows how many years. I think you're a good shit, but it is not, I digress. Gene, go ahead and continue, please. And uh, I thought Atlanta, Atlanta stole the show in the NFC South with the picks that they made. Uh, I can't argue with any, any of the moves and I, you know, my hat's off to that GM Mm-hmm. and uh, what they were able to do. So I, I will give them an A. Uh, the Saints, uh, I, I wish they would have addressed some, some of the other other needs. Uh, the, the edge rusher, I, I, I kind of see that. Uh, I don't know. I just, from what I've, I've looked at their draft, uh, I, I would have to give them like a, a C plus. And uh, there are just some, the quarterback situation, I probably would have gone with Hundley myself over uh, – the, the quarterback they ended up taking, but that's just me. Okay, and, I mean, I think those, those are, that's a fair assessment. Joey, um, I want to get my grade. Please. And then, and last last but not least, uh, I wanted to give, oh, uh, I give, give Tampa, last but not least, Tampa, I give them a B. Uh, I wish they would have addressed the edge rusher. Uh, there were a lot of defensive ends that, that mm-hmm. were in the draft, mm-hmm. and, and I'm just not happy with, with what they have. And the Tampa two is predicated on getting pressure on the quarterback, mm-hmm. so it's important to have those edge rushers uh, speeding up the play, so the quarterbacks, you know, rushed or getting the ball out or getting a sack. So um, they did good. They addressed some needs, but to me, I, I would have liked to have seen them at least, you know, try to get an edge rusher. I uh, I want to pass out my grades. Obviously, I'm going to give Atlanta an, a solid A. Uh, I think they hit on all of their picks, and now I guess uh, I don't know the enough. Uh, well, actually, uh, well, I guess maybe that I think that um, Scott is right on the idea that their offensive line is not necessarily um, it's actually been trash for a couple for the last two years. They've got uh, four solid starters on that line: Jake Matthews at left tackle, Ollie at center, Osamo at right guard and Schrader at right tackle, but they need a left guard. They need to address and you, any, and you need depth, too. That's another thing. Uh, that they went out and signed some solid depth. Well, the question mark is, you know, so we got to see those guys, those players progress, but I'm ready to give these guys an A because that Jalen Collins dude is no joke. Um, the only, I, I, only question I have about Jalen Collins is the, the failed drug test. That's the only problem I have with he him. He hadn't had one in a year. Otherwise, they weren't going to draft him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He had three, he had three weed. Uh, he got popped for weed in college three times. And then his, but his last one was in the middle of his sophomore year, and he hadn't had one since. Jesus if he had had one since, he would have been off the board. Jesus. You're right. I'm changing my grade. I'm changing my grade to a solid F because they picked great. Uh, they picked uh, Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> they picked damn Hardy. Effers. Uh, che- uh, no, but I think I love I love their first five picks. Um, and, or I think that here, given that there's no problems with any of those players, which I don't foresee any, uh, that the, those are solid, solid picks top to bottom. Like you didn't miss in five rounds, uh, at, at least from what we're what we're saying um, from before, you know, pre-draft. Now we we got to look at this and see how other guys, how other teams did at the end of the season, because you know Carolina Panthers got to see last year coming out of the draft. And then when they did the regrades and you got Ben A in the fifth and things like that, you really saw some guys shoot up. You got some strong mm-hmm. value that you didn't see just based on the right. underwear Olympics. Uh, I want to give um, – I think I'm going to give Tampa – you know, I'm going to give Tampa a B-. Uh, and I think this is that I think Tampa's draft is just made better by the fact that you got the number one pick. Uh, and, I mean, how can that not be helpful? Sure. You had two top picks. You had a, I mean, you had a, a, a one and a thirty-four. That's some pretty good numbers to be picking at. So you better have a good draft. Uh, but I'm gonna. The reason I lowered their draft grade was because Jameis Winston automatically, right after the draft is over, is already tweeting pictures of him eating crab legs. Oh come on, that was funny. You know, do you know the story that behind that? Funny. Yes, it's the guy that it's the guy from the dangerous catch mess and stuff like that. But I've, I I just was thinking this. I was surprised that he didn't have the damn table in the background on when they were having that family party. 
<laughs> full of crab legs, you know. Um, <laughs> so we've we've got to see. I think that uh, I think people have been overly forgiving with Jameis Winston. So we'll see wow. how he pans out. I I think I, that there's a little bit more to that story that's not getting released because we don't want to victim blame in this uh, this situation. But you know, I I just think it's more about. Didn't you know, he have two? Blame. My thing is this: is I thought that he had two people file. No, one filed a charge, one jumped on a lawsuit. Yeah. Money grab. All right, but, I mean, mon- everything looks like a money grab. Yes. It all is very Yeah, strange. but here's the thing is nobody Agreed. said that when the stupid ass cracking was in this, you know, which also could be our I'm just saying this. It's a It didn't look like a money grab for Kraken because it was a cop that came to his house. Russian. Now I don't know this. This girl, I think, is diminishing the fact that this girl's the original girl's claim could be legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, aside from that, it's, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I don't really care about that. Um, I thought the Carolina Panthers. I think when we look back at this, uh, that the Carolina Panthers draft is going to be uh, okay. And I think what you're going to see is this: is I think you're going to see our. Um, we're going to have three pit. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to upgrade us, and I say this, is that I'm going to give us a B-. minus. The only question to mark out of all these guys that I have is the Mayo kid, the mayonnaise kid. Oh, he's awful. Uh, that's a backup his entire time there. He's terrible. Special teams. Yeah, that's all he's good for. Yeah, but my que- and, and this is why I'm going to ding him on this. If, if that is the case and you're you're picking him in the fifth and you're still going to get that running back that everybody says is the, the steal after him in the fifth, is there not something better you could have done there with higher value maybe other than picking Joe Dirt uh, to join your team? I, th- I honestly think it was a move to help solidify the special teams. They've done a huge... They made it. You made should not draft for that. No, you what I'm saying is, special teams. you know he's going to be a backup, but he's not coming to start. He, he's not going to start, so you know he's going to be a backup. But you know, at the same time, he'll be able to contribute on special teams. He's going to come well, in. We got Jason Trusnick. Jason Trusnick can sure. contribute. You know, yeah, and he's a linebacker. Yeah, you but he's a, he's an eight-year veteran too. This guy's a young kid that can come in and give you six or seven years on special teams and be a significant contributor with Teddy Williams, um, you know, and, and that's what I think. I think, you know, he may get a, he may get some playing time. God forbid Keith Lee goes down, he's going to have to come in and play. So I'm going to give, though, this – I think this is where I'm going to make sure I give the edge to put us in the B range right away is got less to do with our draft, and this might be cheating – but I think that when you add our undrafted free agents to the mix of who we were able to get, and there's two names specifically, Gary Peters, cornerback out of Clemson, undrafted free agent, as well as uh, the Demir Bird, wide receiver out of South Carolina. He's a hell of a player. He is. He's uh, fast. Man. He's an asshole off the field, but he's a hell of a player. <laughs> Why do you say that? Did he have charges filed? Oh, sorry. Uh, it had sure. nothing to do with charges filed. He's just a dick. His, his coaches hate him. They he's absolutely a, hate him. He's a burner. He's not he, good. Yeah, he's been burn listed by his coaches. Mm-hmm. That's why he didn't get drafted. What about the Saints? Did you give them a grade, Tony? No, I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna give them a, a C plus. I like their first. I like. Uh, I like the Pete pick. I don't know enough about the Anthony guy. Um, I think he'll start. Dude, he'll start day one. Yeah, he'll I mean, start day he's one. A beast. He should start over whoever the hell else is out. I mean, I'm very happy with him. A lot of Clemson guys coming out of this yeah. draft. Good well, they, were, they had a really solid defense last year. Very, yeah, very good his, defense. I think he got a steal. He's going to have some athletes, and he's going to have a hell of a defense. Yeah. I think, you got a, I think you get a steal, a steal in P.J. Williams, and the fact is is that um, you know top cornerback that slips so much because of the DUI, yep. I don't know if he's going to enter. Does he enter on the drug rehab program? That, yep. Probably, so that right. might be a – you know, maybe that's a good thing for a kid that's kind of had a history of, uh, of problem or mm-hmm. I, I guess some questions surrounding him. Uh, I think that's good, but I'm going to knock them for the for the quarterback pick in the third. Uh, I think that if you want a backup pick, 
a backup quarterback, uh, that's not going to leave you out to dry. I think that there's plenty uh, that even teams are trying to start right now in the NFL that could, you know, just put them on your roster. I don't think you should get a pick that you don't think is going to really have a legitimate shot at being. I, I think it's fool's gold to chase those guys that you think maybe can groom into a starting quarterback Why that wouldn't? early. I don't get that. Uh, why wouldn't you have a guy that you want? You want to groom at third in the third pick, third round? I think that what you can do. Well, the, I mean, I think you can get a guy. Like it's going to be more sure. I think you can be a, a guy that you're more sure of in the third round. And I, bet, I, I just bet he would have been there later. Yeah, like in the sixth. Maybe, maybe yeah, not. Like the fourth or fifth round. At that point in time, I mean. Sometimes, sometimes you do pick the guy that I mean. They, you know, sometimes, they went for the guy. Right. You go get the guy. I mean, you I have a you know, the best fit for your team. Gonna happen, they're gonna get a quarterback. That's what aggravates me. What? He's not even the best fit for their scheme or their team. He's just a quarterback. He's a an average at best NFL average starter at quarterback. So I'm NFL giving them quarterback. a. I'm giving them a a solid. You know, I'm going to say a B minus, I guess, for them. Um, and that's it. Those are my grades. I want to say that I think the Shaq Thompson pick, I think that, uh, I think Gene is right. I think that what we're going to find is this, is that dude is going to ball out. And I think I that, and I think that that's what you want in the first round. I think instead of just always trying to draft need is why don't you just do what the Seattle Seahawks do and just create a balling ass team and figure the rest out as you go. The Seattle Seahawks suck at drafting, by the way. A lot of their first round picks end up failing. So, well, I mean, since out. what? I, I since the Pete Carroll era? Yeah, dude, their, their draft picks aren't great. What makes Seattle great isn't their first round picks, it's their fifth, their sixth, their seventh. Right. Yeah. Their undrafted free agents that they develop. That's yeah. what makes the Seahawks great. Yep. They start more third day guys than first day guys every single year. Well, you think about because it. Because that's, that's what they developed. I'm talking, they Thompson, yeah. I'm talking Shaq Thompson. Yeah, I'm talking Shaq Thompson being a it. Seattle Seahawk type player. That's what I'm. Well, thinking. yeah, he's like a Bobby Wagner. He's that rare good high pick that they'll have. Yeah. But Gettleman is a guy who's actually drafting good players in the first round. He really is. And yeah, the yeah. fifth. And the and third. And the second. Maybe not in the fourth or the fifth, but in the first and the second rounds, he's hitting on them easily. When he went and got Kawan Short to go with Star Latulule, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. You that's know? the guy right there. That's yeah, my yeah. guy, Kate. I mean, that was, that was probably the best move he's made, and that's made your defense what it is. Because you've got a pair of badasses right in the middle. And then you got Juan Edwards, the veteran, who's teaching them and rotating it. And you got a guy by the number number fifty nine back there and number fifty eight back there. That doesn't hurt. Without those two defensive tackles in front of him, number fifty nine is not nearly as effective. No, he's still good. He's still good, but those he's not, guys definitely he's make not, him better. No, we we saw when Carolina's defense good. looked without the defensive tackles. It was you know not that great. I mean, is that they went from uh, like a twenty and a twenty two ranked defense. 24 ranked defense to like the like second ranked defense in yeah. one year. So, all right, that's what I got, Joe. All right, guys, well, we're gonna wrap this up. We've been going on an hour and a half now. I'm gonna ask uh, one, maybe two last questions. Um, which team's gonna have the biggest turnaround this year? Start with you, uh, Gene, uh, Greg. Biggest turnaround. Uh, I, I I would say I definitely see an uh, I, I would expect a real big improvement from Tampa. I think Tampa. I don't know if they're gonna be, you know, like I'm not saying division leaders or anything like that. They may still be fourth in the division, but they're definitely gonna be a hell of a lot better than what they are they were before. I think you'll see, I think you do will see a market improvement out of the team because uh, I thought the defense was kind of coming around a little bit last year uh, at the time. And now I think that having I think having a stable offense coordinator with Dirk Cutter, and you guys do have talent on offense, and if you can ever get your line going to protect Winston, I think you I, I do think you might make a really really they'll make a they'll they'll be tough they'll be a definitely a much tougher team 
Uh, I don't, the, you know, I don't know exactly how many games they'll win or anything right. like that. I, I'll wait before I make that kind of prediction. Sure. But I, but I do think that uh, I, I expect them to be a lot hard, definitely harder uh, to beat, much harder. I think, harder that's, a, I think that's a good call. Scott, what do you think? I mean, it's got to be Tampa. That whole rule of if you don't have a franchise quarterback, go get one, and so that you can have a situation like Tampa where you've got a solid team. Not mm-hmm. a great team, but a solid team all around. Right. Whose biggest issue is that their quarterback keeps losing in games and totally sucks. Mm-hmm. So you fix that issue, yeah. And then you give him a couple offensive linemen to help protect them. Yeah. You can't really go better than that. I mean, they they just they really improved this mm-hmm. offseason. Yes. Right, and I think because of the fact that they have the most room to improve. Yes. They will. Gene, I'm not even going to bother asking you because I know the answer. <laughs> Okay, you've been saying that since even before the draft. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, what do you think? I think I'm going to go with Atlanta. Uh, and I'm going to go with Atlanta for the reason that uh, I think that they were kind of close to being there. They got some real good parts. You know, you got a veteran quarterback uh, that that can be effective. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say Carolina because there's nothing to turn around. We won the division, and we're going to possibly, I think, uh, win it again. Three so three. go ahead and throw it up there. But I think that uh, the coach. I, I think this is that the only thing I think my concern maybe is with uh, the kind of just the the turnover of a new coach, the learning curve uh, of being a head coach. Is that going to be something that, you know, I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a super setback. And I don't see that being the case. But it's it's a change, right? So that change might have something to do with it. And you're adding a lot of personnel. But I, I like uh, Jake Matthews going into his second year, going to be a lot better on the offensive line. I think Justin Hardy is going to come in there and contribute right away, fit real well, uh, fit real well with Matt Ryan into that. Um, I think Matt Ryan can, you know, can take advantage of, of what Justin Hardy's skill set is the most. And, and, uh, and I think, man, you know, uh, what Atlanta to me has really lacked the most even more than you could say their pass rush. I think the running, the lack of a running game puts a lot of pressure on them. And if, if, that, if Tevin Coleman can come in there and really contribute, all of a sudden you go from a team that was in games a lot of the time and about to, you know, could have gone the other way easily. You see a lot of games there last season that the Falcons were in and it just went the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And that's because you don't have – you got a lot of good pieces, but you don't got the kind of, uh, I won't say continuity, but like a comprehensiveness to your roster. Uh, and we saw that with Carolina in many ways. Is you got a lot of good players. You got pass rushers. You got uh, you got uh, a, a quarter, big quarterback. There, these like these stars. But when you miss some some critical aspects of the game, it it just negates that. So I think uh, I'm gonna go with Atlanta on this. You know, I think that's a good call too. I think they do. Um, they added enough pieces to where they uh, they can make a significant improvement as well. And I think uh, that just and the reason I'm not going to say the Bucks is this is I don't think that a bunch of young offensive linemen are going to come in and turn it around right away. All right, no doubt they'll be better, but how much better? It's a it's a learning curve for offensive linemen, just like anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, last question. Anybody? Um, I guess I'll start with Eugene since we kind of skipped over you. Last question. Um, predictions for Rookie of the Year in the NFC South. It can be offense or defense. On the offense or defense, I am gonna I'm gonna go with Shaq Thompson. It's just yeah. Much as I hate the Carolina Panthers, that's that's, that's the route I'm going. All right. I think- you gotta have you're a fan. secret Carolina Panther fan. He's a closet uh, Panther fan. <laughs> no, no, no. What about you, I'm Mr. Good. I'm good. I'm good. What about you, Mr. Barber? Oh man, rookie of the year. That's a tough one. Um and Garrett Grayson doesn't count. No, I won't be calling <laughs> Grayson. I won't be calling Grayson if it's forty five. Uh and hopefully hopefully he'll never have to step on the field for at least a couple years. At least, right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to figure out what we got from there. Um, God, that's a tough one because rookie of the year. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put Jameis Winston. I think he'll have a good year. 
Wow. I think he'll I have like that. Year. I like that. I really do. I like I think, that. Scott, I think, what about you? I think Winston has a strong year. Like I said, I'm I mean, they still might have a in the division, but I think it'd be a, they'll have a good year. I like that. I'm going to be a homer and say our good buddy, Vaughn, uh, Vic Beasley. I knew you were going to say that. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, Beasley, Beasley crossed my mind. Beasley did cross my he's mind. He's in the too. perfect scheme to just go off. I'm, I'm going gonna... against a bunch of really mediocre offensive linemen. So that's why I'm going with Beasley. Just makes right. sense to me. Fair enough. I'm going Jameis Winston. Wow, two votes for Jameis. Uh, and, and, and my idea with that is, is damn, if if somebody with those receivers, another right. year out of Vincent Jackson, yeah, I mean, talk about, uh, I mean, a safety blanket for you, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and you got uh, the tight end guy that has got the, the very second year under his belt. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's some weapons there. I guess the question mark is they're gonna they're gonna have a running game to help support him. Well, right. I mean, you got Doug Martin there. You got Charles Sims. You kind of can't think talk about Doug Martin different. anymore. We can't talk about Doug Martin anymore. The guy had three games that one year where he put up those monster ass yeah. numbers, and we and we haven't seen anything else from him. Yeah, well, he's, he's, been, he's been injured. He was injured. Well, but, I mean, but that all, but none. Of, you know what I mean? But until that doesn't happen, I can't. I can't say that, that it's just going to work. Well, no, I'm not saying he's not the monster numbers, but I'm saying the fact that I, you can't. You can't say that Martin probably wouldn't have what an eight nine hundred yard year, and Sims might do some of the same. To where they have a, two good backs who will be able to have solid year. There, I mean, they got two backs there who can put together a solid uh, running game. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he's going to have, you know, monster, you know, player of the year numbers. But I'm just saying the fact that he is a solid enough back to to, to be dangerous. Got to still consider the guy. Gene, I mean, when did he get when did he get injured? Gene, when did he get injured last season with Two that hand? Ago, Two years ago, wasn't it? No, he got he got injured. He injured his knee last year. Again? Yeah. And um, but he uh, can't oh, catch. I, What's up? He can't catch on the backfield. Another that's, problem. That's uh, Charles Sims. Charles Sims. That's what they drafted that's him he, for. Yeah. They they picked him that's up. And, um, he's supposed to be the guy that uh, can catch out of the backfield. He had an Achilles injury, I believe, and he was yeah, out he for half the season. Injury. And, yes, he, and he, came, he came on. He started coming on towards the end of the season. Uh, I, I will say this about, about Doug Martin. This is a contract year for him. It so is. I, do, I do expect to see him balling out this year. Uh, you guys can, you know, I know that with what he's, his production over the, the past two years, you can't really say whether he's good or not. But I think, you know, with this being a contract year for him and the fact that the Bucks didn't exercise that fifth year, uh, he's got something to prove, and I, I think that you're going to see uh, the old Doug Martin performing this season. Yeah. He's going to prove that he doesn't suck. Yeah, but he, won't, but he won't be. But he won't be. Let's say like this. I don't think he's back in Tampa anyway. Yeah. I really. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, don't. Here, I, just, I think he's elsewhere. Yeah. I think. Yeah. He, you know, if he bust, if he busts 11, 1200 yards next year, or, or even you know uh, one of the top five rushers, he's gone elsewhere. Yeah. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it a wrap. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. I know it's been a while since we've done this, but as usual, yep. it's been a really good time. I'm going to give each of you uh, about 10 seconds to promote yourselves, tell people how they can get at you. Go ahead and start things off, Mr. Karasik. I'm Scott Karasik. You can find my work at Bleacher Report and Pro Football Spot. I'm the featured draft analyst for Pro Football Spot. I'm also a Atlanta Falcons writer for Bleacher Report. Also, you can watch my show that I do with a guy named Aaron Freeman out of Falk Fans called Falcon Central Radio. Very nice. You, you next, Greg. All right, well, you can talk to me at, uh, at Intense TV uh, on Twitter. Uh, basically, I do write for Southbound and Down, uh, Cat, uh, Cat Chronicles, of course, a uh, little Saints writing here and there. And uh, like I said, you can catch me there at uh, – at, at, and it's SGB, and you know, always, like I said, talk football, wrestling, whatever. I'm all, uh, basketball. Wrestling. 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 That's right. <laughs> That's right. Elbow drops and chair shots, baby. That's, That's right. What talking about. What's up, Gene? Where can people get, get at you at? Uh, you can find me at um, Super Heavyweight on Twitter. Uh, please check out my show, Buck What You Heard. 
Um, we can just get it started. I'm trying to get some different guests on, so uh, look for that. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for showing support when, with my show and everything. I appreciate that. And I just want to go for the record and say I didn't choose Jameis Winston for Rookie of the Year because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> and let me tell you, folks, if if you're a Tampa Bay Bucks fan, make sure you uh, catch that podcast because Gene knows what he's talking about and he tells it like it is. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. Mr. Anthony, the Professor Dunn, where can people reach you at should they want to reach out to you in the Twitterverse? Well, you can argue with me on Twitter at cat underscore chronicles, and you can check out my work at carolinacatchronicles.com. I uh, hosted the C3 podcast. Uh, you know what? I'd like to say this is I want to give Gene some mega props. I've watched his show. Crushed it by an hour and uh, one night. An hour monologue, brother. It's a hard thing to do, and you made it look easy, so I'm jealous you guys check out the C3 podcast, though, because we've been raging. Uh, man, it's been going great. The show's blowing up. You can check me out on Fridays, too, Pirate Radio 1250, talking NFL football every week. And that's it. It's the professor. I am on the C3 podcast with, with the professor and um, more regularly than not, Mr. Mel Mayock. And you can catch me on Twitter at Joe Riolano. Um, I am the... I guess the the designer of this South Mountain Town podcast, which I love. I've got some a great guests every week on here, and I really do appreciate you guys jumping on. We'll look to do something um, probably closer to OTA's training camp around there. We'll get back together. All right, guys? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Yep, I'm all for it. All right, thank you, and stay classy.